Hello everybody, I am Jürgen Brownstein and I am with CSM's Business Development. Today I will present a novel technology for temperature measurements. We, CSM, made advancements of the state of the art. This technology is very useful where you have space constraints and a large number of sensors, for example in a high voltage battery. What is so special about temperature measurements in high voltage batteries? What is specific? As you probably know, battery lifetime and battery performance strongly depend on temperature. There's a trade-off of capacity versus lifetime with an optimum between 22 and 25 degrees C's, which is a very narrow band. Consequently, tight control is required. The battery management system takes care of it. Furthermore, everybody knows these pictures. Burning batteries and burning cars. The thermal runaway has to be avoided, of course. Automotive industry requires fast design cycles at lowest cost. Therefore, thermal modeling is a must. The model predicts the behavior of the battery at all levels, cells, modules, and pack. But a model is a model. What about reality? The verification of the model. Talking to the modeling guys, we learned that they want hundreds of temperature measurement points inside the high voltage battery for model verification. Let's look at the current status of temperature measurements in high voltage batteries. The existing high voltage safe temperature measurement technology has most of the electronics outside the high voltage enclosure. Here you see electronics ending up in racks somewhere at the test bench or in the trunk of a car. And here we have hundreds of analog cables picking up noise and minimizing signal quality. Furthermore, there are numerous glands needed to get into the battery. And there are space limitations, there are mechanical limitations. And these hundreds of temperature sensors have to be placed meticulously which is a life nightmare, especially in a life battery. So these requirements cannot be fulfilled with the existing technology. What is really needed? What is industry looking for? Get temperatures from the inside of the battery with a low number of glands for minimum influence on the device under test, such as mechanical impact or space problems. A high spatial resolution is needed for model verification. It has to be covered by hundreds of sensors. These sensors have to be mounted very accurately, else the output has no value for model verification. Therefore, easy installation for time, efficiency, and precise sensor location will make life easier. You also have to make sure of good bookkeeping of the sensors to know where they are. Easy identification of individual sensors is very desirable and perfect would be to use some automatic means. High quality of the measured temperature is a prerequisite, so the system must not be sensible to electromagnetic interference. So no interferences are tolerable to minimize signal noise. The temperature sensors might end up between pouch cells, hence we also need mechanically robust sensors. Now I will present our solution for the presented needs, CSM HVD temp. So what does this explanation mean? It's our high voltage safe digital temperature measurement system. It revolutionizes temperature measurements, not only in batteries, but it's a novel solution for safe measurements of temperature inside high voltage enclosures. And we have filed patents. I hope I made you curious. Let me introduce the components of our novel system. Let's go back to the familiar picture from the title page, as it shows our components in an installed in a high voltage battery. I will give course explanation of what you see here and more details on the next slides. So there are temperature integrated circuit sensors either individual ones or in arrays. We bring part of the electronics inside the battery. These green things are called DTEMP-M, the controllers. 
And there's also a master unit here with galvanic isolation. It's sitting outside the high voltage enclosure. We call it DTEMP P. Finally, I show the components well the distraction of the details of the high voltage battery. So the master unit, the connect high voltage safe connection cable, the individual sensors, and the controllers that go into the high voltage enclosure. Now I go to the details of our novel temperature measuring system, starting with the sensors. We have digital integrated circuit sensors. They use physical characteristics of the semiconductor to determine the temperature. The, it, the IC sensors have a digital output on a bus system. Various connection patterns are possible. On this slide we show individual connections. So they might be on a pouch cell, they might be on a bus bar. There is a size comparison to a dime. The IC is just or less than a tenth of the dimensions of a dime, so there will be no space problems. The sensor is measuring temperature from the, from the bottom side. And instead of only comparing, we give metric numbers here, 1.5 millimeters by 1 millimeter by 0.5 millimeter for the IC temperature sensor. The sensor bus system allows for up to four sensors on a bus. Here I show different layouts. Four temperature sensors coming from one distribution board or daisy chain sensors with one sensor at the end. Of. And some more data. The measurement range of the temperature sensors is from minus 40 degrees C to 125 degrees C or minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 257 degrees Fahrenheit. And the accuracy of the sensors is between 0.1 degrees C and 0.2 degrees C. So it depends on in which temperature range you measure. Where you need it most, it's 0.1 degrees C. I'll give more details in my summary. Instead of you wiring up the IC temperature sensors, we can do it for you using standard PCB technology. But we will use flexible circuits because they are thinner. So they are arrays on customer-specific ultra-thin flexible circuits, your designs. The temperature sensors are barely visible. Let me highlight them here. Up to four IC sensors can be on one data bus. Their leads are let out to the outside to be contacted by connectorized cables. Here we show a pouch cell and a temperature distribution that needs to be characterized. R&D comes up with a list of coordinates where they want temperature to be measured. These white circles, for example. The coordinates are put into the layout of the film. So it's according to the temperature model that was made for the pouch or the module. We show this here. The model requires temperature measurements in all these places. As the temperature sensors are mounted by PCB technology, they exactly end up where they have to be. Furthermore, the film matches the geometry of the cells or the modules. And automatically, all temperature sensors are properly aligned and measurements are taken exactly where needed. So it's a precise and repeatable installation. It's a thin film, but robust. It can be put between pouch cells. It survives pressing or the charging cycles. I'll show in a video how easily the flexible circuits with the IC sensors can be used in a high voltage battery module. You'll see a pouch cell in a film with two sets of four sensors placed on top of it. The film is tailored to your needs and its geometry matches the cells. So here we show how a whole stack is built with the ultra-thin flexible circuits that can be pressed between the cells. There are no mechanical problems. Everything is put into the module or the frame. And cables, of course, are let out. 
In this example, we have 96 temperature sensors in the module. We move up one hierarchy level to the controller unit, CSM HVD temp, dash M16 or dash 64. M16 handling 16 sensors, M64 handling 64 IC sensors respectively. The controllers are very small, three inches by one and three quarters of an inch by three eighths of an inch high so that they fit into the high voltage enclosure. The controllers have 16 ports, eight on each side to connect to the temperature sensors. And here you see the controllers in the familiar surrounding that you saw on the tile page already with various temperature sensors connecting to it with the digital buses. The DTEMP controller is for addressing the sensors for their power supply and safe data transfer. There is a connection cable between the controllers so that you can daisy chain them up to eight DTEMP M64 can be daisy chained. That gives you 512 temperatures. The first controller in the daisy chain takes care of the connection to the outside world. So that's the, and as of here, it's a high voltage safe cable which is being led outside and it connects to the master unit to DTEMP P. Last but not least, the next component of our DTEMP system, one hierarchy level up again, is the DTEMP P central unit, the master controller. One high voltage safe cable connects to the first controller. It's less than eight millimeters thick and it transfers power and the signals on an internal digital bus and it's connecting to these ports here. The DTEMP controls the system. The total maximum channel count is 512. What about high voltage safety? Well, this unit is sitting outside of the battery and it comprises galvanic isolation in here. Good for a thousand volts, RMS of thousand volts effective. And the connecting to your measurement system, it's done via standard bus connections and here are the CAN ports. And we are using standard CAN protocol, so you can measure it in your software. The ports are also good for configuration via CAN from your PC with our DTEMP configuration software. Uh, to have less risk confusing sensors, each temperature sensor has its unique ID and you can assign channel names. So bookkeeping becomes easy. Furthermore, you can of course assign the CAN ID to the temperature channels and you can set the sending rate of the system between 1 Hz and 20 Hz. Well, to wrap up here, where can we use our DTEMP system? What are the areas of application? First of all, the system is rugged and it's sealed well, IP65. You can use it in ambient between minus 40 degrees C and 125 degrees C is or nearly 260 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's suitable for applications at test benches for all kinds of battery testing at different levels, cells, modules, or packs. It's suitable for in-vehicle testing on the road or in the dyno cell. Basically, you can use it anywhere where you have tasks where space is limited or a large number of sensors is needed. To wrap up another video, we already saw in the previous video how the IC sensors are placed in a module. Now we show the next steps to instrument the whole battery pack. So remember how the module was instrumented with the leads coming out. So now all modules are instrumented, cables are put in between. There might be hotspots, so temperature sensors might be on a bus bar. We show more details like a controller with the connections to the IC sensors.
and you see this port is still open and that's where the cable to the outside world will be connected the high voltage safe cable and there are other CAN ports for standard communication and notice there's only one gland needed to bring out 512 temperature signals and it's all on standard CAN bus for all who prefer a printable summary instead of the video just seen, I repeat a few points to wrap up. The requirements we mentioned in the beginning are all fulfilled by our HVD temp system. Up to 512 digital temperature sensors can be handled by one system. 0.1 degrees C accuracy between minus 20 degrees C's and plus 50 degrees C's. So highest accuracy in the most important temperature range. Remember that the battery needs a temperature between 23 and 25 degrees C's. We have digital signal processors inside the high voltage enclosure. We have digital temperature sensors, IC based, it's all connected by digital buses, so it's leading to minimum noise, resulting in very good electromagnetic compatibility and low electromagnetic interference. There's perfect alignment of the sensor arrays because we're using the flexible thin circuits, which are basically self-aligning. And last but not least, safety. There's galvanic isolation of 1000 volts RMS built in between all sockets of the external unit. So the power supply, the CAN output and the measurement points. So we assure high voltage safety for the users and the equipment. Ladies and gentlemen, I used my allocated time slot and stop here. I could give you more information about our novel temperature measurement system, giving you opportunities to measure temperature distributions that you could not measure previously. I look forward to getting your questions.